Okay, well, it came out. Uh, I'm kind of, as you could tell, doing this project with the uh, new cooling unit, kind of in bits and pieces because of my schedule. Uh, so I come out and I spend a little bit of time on it, that kind of thing. So uh, I came out today to kind of test out the electrical, get it finished up, and I ran into another hitch. Now, this is something I suspected may happen, and, uh, it, and it looks like it probably did. So let me show you what's going on. Okay, so we're at the unit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna briefly turn it on on the LP side like it's supposed to. There it is, low DC. Lights are on and everything, but that compressor is not doing what it's supposed to do. Now when it does that, when I turn on the thing, I can actually hear the compressor. It's got like a little motor sound for a little bit. And you can tell it's trying to turn off, but then it sort of gives up. And uh, and then I get the low DC error. And, uh, and then when I go out there and listen to it, you can hear the slight little whine to it. Like there's some kind of current going through there, but it's not enough. It doesn't have enough juice, apparently, to, uh, to get the thing done. And so we sit down. What I suspect is happening, is uh it's obviously not getting enough 12 volt power um and i when i was shopping for this cooling unit jr told me that sometimes they find that the gauge of wire that's supplying 12 volt power to the fridge just isn't big enough and i think that's probably what's happening i think that I, i'm going to probably have to run a higher gauge wire from this fridge down to the battery uh, he recommended a 10 gauge. I'm going to get his take on the best way to get the wire down there. Uh, but let's go out and show that to you. Okay. So the fridge is still hanging out of the box here. Um, and I still need to put the cover on. So there's still a few things to do here. The ice maker's connected, but I don't have, uh, there it is. I don't have the electrical plugged into it. I'm just trying to get the compressor to work. And here's the, uh, the power leads. And here is the wires. This is the, uh, the negative and the red is the positive that are coming out of the coach and are supposed to power this entire thing. And I can't find anywhere on the, the uh, sheathing what the gauge is, but it looks sort of thin to me. Um, I think it needs to be a thicker, thicker thing. So I'm gonna confirm it with them, but I think what I'm gonna have to do is not use um, these two power leads right here, I think I'm going to have to run brand new wire from this point down to the battery. Now, if we back out, we've got the furnace right underneath it. I can get the wire, what I'm thinking, because the battery is over here, and we've got probably a good 10 feet between them. And so what I'm thinking, and because I've never done this before, I'm thinking that I can go down here through where the furnace is, come down into the undercarriage. And once it's down here, I can route it along the, the chassis or something like that, like all the other wires are. And then I pop it out here in the battery compartment. And there's the holes. I could just come in from the rear and come in right, right in that hole and, and connect it directly to the battery and then we'll have a direct line. So the big thing I'll need to check is whether that's the way they would do it, because he told me that they do this kind of thing all the time uh, when they're doing an install oops, up there in Indiana. But I've never done it. So I just wanna make sure that if I'm routing the wire down, that that is the correct way. I'm Again, I'm thinking go straight down. There's gonna be a compartment down here where the furnace is. I could probably run it down through the floorboard. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> And then, uh, then I can work its way back uh, through the uh, underbelly of the RV.